Welcome back to the Auburn Film Room, entering week nine of the college football season. I'm Lauren Sisler. This is Cole Kublick. And the Auburn offense getting a lot of credit, but how about the defense? A stomping on Arkansas, 56-3. to What did you see in this game? What impressed you most? I was really impressed by the defensive line. And we're going to take a look at a play where Carl Lawson gets into the backfield and pressures the quarterback. But there were some tackles for losses. There were pressures. There were sacks. There was penetration in between that line of scrimmage for the Razorbacks offensive line. But what impressed me the most about the Auburn defensive line, Lauren, was the linebackers being able to play a clean game. So you saw Deshaun Davis, you saw Darren Williams all be able to run around, not have to fight through blocks, basically take on running backs one-on-one -on -one in the hole, one-on-one -on, -one on the edge, and the majority of the time they came away making those plays. So I think we get carried away and consumed sometimes with – did you get a sack? Was there a penetration, a tackle for loss, pressures on the quarterback? But when those linebackers are able to play a clean game like that and play assignment football and just have an open target at the running back or the ball carrier, I think that's a sign of a great defensive line. So play action protection here, Lauren. You'll see the tackle's going to try to jump Carl Lawson, so it's going to get a little bit wide, short set. And when you have a speed rusher like Carl Lawson, depth to me is critical. But you'll see just how he can affect the pocket and affect the backfield. Nice job utilizing his quickness, utilizing his hands. And you see Montrevious Adams and company with pressure up the middle as well. So there's really nowhere for Austin Allen to go. Excellent job by Lawson on the edge. Something that's going to be critical this week because Ole Miss is going to give you a lot of quick protection. Slide protection, play action protection, two and three step drop protection, rather than that deep seven step, five step drop protection. So looks like this are going to be similar to what Auburn's going to see this weekend against Ole Miss. If Carl Lawson and company can disrupt getting the backfield, it could be a long day for Chad Kelly. Now the defense obviously doing their job, the offense stepping in and doing their job as well. Sean White, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves, especially being able to use his legs and adding another dimension to this offense. Now one thing, you recall last year we talked a lot about the secondary and tertiary runs in this offense and they basically vanished. And I think with Sean White this year, you've kind of seen just a better understanding of the offense. Maybe last year he was being directed to just hand these balls off a lot of times. Either he wasn't healthy, they didn't want to put him in harm's way, trying to play it safe and just hand the football off. But this year you've seen Sean White sort of go to the fact that he's able to pull these balls and able to come up with some bigger runs. To me, Lauren, this run's not about the amount of yards. It's not the fact that it's an explosive play. It's about the fact that if you look how defenses are going to play this, you cannot allow defensive ends to attack your runs. Once you do, you have to take advantage of it. Sean White is not a dynamic runner. He's not running past anybody. But if your defense is going to overplay runs, your zone runs to your tailbacks, you have to make them pay. And that's what Sean White does here. An excellent read. And you see an excellent block downfield by the tight end. These plays are dangerous because they force defenses to play you straight up, to play you honest. Those defensive ends have to stay out wide, and that's going to give a guy like Cam Petway and these other Auburn running backs more room, more space for what's been the most valuable run in this offense the last three games, and that's the cutback runs when Cam Petway has been handed the football. So that's a big play, not just in this game, but moving on, moving forward, and building around what Rhett Lashley wants to do offensively. Now, Cole, Auburn running the football like we're used to seeing Auburn run the football. 543 yards rushing on the ground against Arkansas. Of course, the north-south run game, a big component of that. And we'll see here with Stanton Truitt. Two things that I think really have changed since Rhett Lashley took over. You mentioned dedicated north-south running attack and wanting to go between the tackles and wanting to quickly get to the line of scrimmage to force defenses to play you a little bit differently. And I think if you don't dedicate yourself to that, and you begin to get tricky and you go for deep reverses and throwbacks, things of that nature, that's when defenses can attack and it pays off. Now, the other thing is spreading formations out. Last year it was potentially an extra tackle here with another H back here when Auburn wanted to run the football. You see second and three, and they would jam all these big bodies near the line of scrimmage and to be honest with you, that's advantage defense because at that point in time, you allow more defenders not just to be near the line of scrimmage, but to be close to the football. So I think Rhett Lashley, by nature, is spreading defenses out. He's removing defenders from the box, potentially by personnel, removing bigger defenders from the field 
And that's giving Auburn a better opportunity to have success running the football straight ahead or north and south. And right here you see it doesn't take much, just a small seam for a guy like Stanton Truitt who's awful quick and has ability to make people miss to get north and south. Couple big blocks on the backside. Double team's gonna work your way up. Don't even have to block the defensive end. Chandler Cox is gonna block back. Nice pickup on the outside linebacker. And you'll see just one cut for Stanton Truitt and he's able to make this play go. Boom. Chandler Cox, nice block. You get to the second, third level as a running back. That's on you to make the defender miss. Stanton Truitt does and he's in the end zone. Okay, so Carryon Johnson obviously out for that game. Cam Petway putting up almost 200 yards, but they're finding multiple guys to get in there to do this. Eli Stove, another guy, finding different ways to run the football and obviously confuse defenses. Well, and, and again, I, I, I know I said that the north-south run game is valuable, and I like that. But one thing that Lashley is doing is even when you're seeing perimeter runs, what you're seeing are quick-hitting perimeter runs. So a little bit of a change up here. You've got the wide side of the field. So take advantage of that. A little bit of a different play. Sean White's going to quickly go up under center, and it's just going to be a jet sweep. But look how tight he is to the line of scrimmage. That's what I like about this play is we've seen some other reverses where Auburn's going kind of arena ball, six and eight yards deep on reverses, and that puts a defender in a bad spot. Tight to the line of scrimmage, quick handoff with a secondary fake off of that, really visually deceives the defense, and allows the running back to hit the hole quickly. Now, you'll see, you see the hash out here, Warren. This back is gonna be north and south really by the time he gets to that hash. So Eli Stove takes the hand off and then boom, north, south. So even though it's a perimeter run, you're coaching your backs up a little bit more by taking advantage of the space that's given and get outside and then get north and south. So not as much dragging runs out to the sideline since Rhett Lashley has taken over Another reason I think this Auburn offense is having more success. Okay, we look ahead to this game against Ole Miss. Auburn, one of the best teams in the nation running the ball. Ole Miss, one of the worst teams in the nation defending the run, 113th in the nation. Besides that, what do you think another key matchup in this game and a key for Auburn to win this football game? Well, uh, I, I think is your, your secondary has to have a short memory. Chad Kelly is too talented. He's too accurate with the football at times. And these receivers for Ole Miss are too talented not to give up chunks of yardage at some point in time. It's not to say that I think Chad Kelly is going to throw for 450 yards, but he's going to hit a few throws. It's just going to happen. So I think, can you forget those throws, put them behind you, line up, play the next play as if those didn't happen. That to me is going to be critical. And then also, I look at this matchup. This was supposed to be a really good Ole Miss defensive line coming into this season. DJ Jones, Isaac Gross, Marquise Haynes, those guys all coming back. They weren't going to be as dominant as a year ago, but we're going to be pretty good. The problem for Ole Miss is similar to Louisiana Monroe, similar to Mississippi State, similar to Arkansas, second and third level defender deficiencies. They just don't tackle well at linebacker, and they just don't tackle well in the secondary. They're very young. They're beat up, having to play new guys. I think that's a big advantage for Auburn. And for me, win first down. Auburn averaging over six yards per carry on first down with nine rushing touchdowns this season. Don't get caught in second and third and long because Marquise Haynes can absolutely take advantage of these Auburn offensive tackles in deep pass protection. So that would be an area where I think Ole Miss could find success. But if Auburn moves the ball on first down on the ground the way that they have so far this season, I don't expect this game to be much of an issue for the Tigers.